Good morning, good morning, everybody. We are indeed grateful to be here this morning at this 9.30 virtual hour. And as we come in at this 9.30 virtual hour, this is an hour of worship. This is an hour of fellowship. This is an hour of learning. And so we come in this morning excited for what it is that can happen. Uh, but one of the things that we have to do is get ourselves into the presence of the Lord. The Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, which means no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through this morning, uh, that the Lord is indeed with you. No matter what you're worried about, the Lord is with you. No matter what you're going through, the Lord is with you. No matter what you're dealing with, the Lord is with you. And because he's with you, uh, you all understand everything that you need is with you. Your peace is with you. Your provision is with you. Your joy is with you. Your fulfillment is with you. The only thing is oftentimes we miss it because we don't know oftentimes how to worship in the spaces that we're in. But this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. For the psalmist says, I will bless the name of the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Something happens when we learn how to lift up the Lord wherever we are. And so this morning, can you do me a favor? Can you lift up the Lord wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you're faced with? Can you just begin to lift up the Lord? For the Lord says, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Which means that the higher you lift the Lord, the more you worship the Lord, the more you keep your mind stayed on him, the more you allow the worship of the Lord to come out of your mouth, the more the praise comes up out of you, the more you'll see the Lord because he'll draw you closer unto him. And so this morning, can you do me a favor and allow the Lord to draw you closer to him by opening up your mouth and giving the Lord a hallelujah? Can you do me a favor and open up your mouth and give the Lord a thank you? Can we just love on the Lord for one quick second this morning? Because we can't get into worship and nothing we do at the shepherd's table is going to matter if you're not in the presence of the Lord. And so do me a favor right quick. Can you just thank the Lord for waking you up this morning? Do me a favor real quick. Can you just Thank the Lord for keeping your mind all year long. Can you do me a favor? Can you just thank the Lord for where he's brought you from? For I believe he's brought you from a mighty, mighty long way. And he's kept you through danger, seen and unseen. And so today we give the Lord thanks for all that he is doing. But more so than that, all that he wants to do. God has a choice and he's chosen you today. And so come on, let's praise him as we go on over to the shepherd's table. And as we go to the shepherd's table today, we'll return back to the preaching lab. But we're grateful to see you today. Come on with us to the shepherd's table so we can talk about being a practicing Christian and come back over here to the preaching lab and hear a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's grab a seat, y'all. A seat at the shepherd's table. God says, I set a table before you in front of your enemies. First, you'll have to discern my voice. Ask and believe with all your heart and choose. Choose as if you have no choice. Signs, wonders, and miracles with faith the size of mustard seeds. And even though mustard seeds are really little, God says, that's all I need for you to trust in me. Luckily, I've exhausted all my human resources. From the marks I missed, I repent and no longer live with remorse. Because God forgives when I don't. And still God will when I won't. A lot of people don't want to sow and then reap. I'm just trying to reap what I've sown. The good me, that is. The me who forgave when I couldn't forgive. The me who lived outside of my flesh when I was drowning in my head. The me, that little girl who became bitter because she was really scared. The me who laid all down and said, God, have my heart. It's all yours. Here it is. A seat at the shepherd table, they say. Well, you should have no fear. Will we take it day by day? Till it's year by year. A seat at the shepherd table, I say, wait, let me grab you a chair. Will we walk by faith from God's word that we hear? Loud and clear. All right, everybody, welcome to the shepherd's table. And I am indeed grateful today uh, for you all to be here with us today. And I am excited to have. Uh, two new guests with us again in this season of The Shepherd's Table. 
uh, where this is your table, not for you to come profess that you have everything right, not because you got it together, not because you're coming to uh, say something, not because you're my favorite, not because uh, I like you more than everybody else, but this is your table for you to get this thing right. This is your table for you to walk through and talk through what you're trying to do in your life, how it's working, how it's not working. This is your table to come ask questions about what it means to be a practicing Christian, where you're missing it, where you're not getting it, where you are getting it, and where you're encouraged by it. Uh, but this is your table to come and to discern and obey and get all God has for you. And so we're grateful today uh, that we get the chance to come to this shepherd's table and the purpose of all of our learning opportunities is to get you to learn how to discern the voice of the Lord. What does that mean to know exactly what God says and then to be obedient to that and then to get all that God has for you, get all the attachments that God has for you with your name on it. God really does want to bless us, you all. And he really does have some awesome things in store for us. We just have to learn how to obtain those things, and we can't obtain them any kind of way. We can't do it any kind of way, and we can't say it any kind of way. That's why we call it a DOA lifestyle, and it really does mean you're going to have to die to yourself in order to get all that God has for you, and that's not always easy. So we come to the shepherd's table to talk about it. And as you look around, uh, the set is getting a little bit better every single day. And today we have our, our nice mugs with us today. It says the shepherd's table. Uh, and hopefully you see the new logo uh, right there. And when you come to the shepherd's table, you get to leave with one of those uh, mugs with you today. And so we're grateful to have Miss Johnny and we're grateful to have Brother Ralph. And when y'all go to work next week, y'all ought to have y'all's nice <laughs> mugs uh, and y'all show them off. You know how when you drink, you put it all in somebody's yeah. face like this uh, <laughs> nah, so they can see uh, all of that in front of them. And so we are grateful uh, for all of them being here. Here with us today and so today as we are at the shepherd's table talk to me you all because I believe y'all have been doing this journey for a long time trusting the Lord for a good little while how long have you really felt like you've been trusting the Lord well I feel like I've been trusting in the Lord I'll say since I was maybe eight nine years old eight nine years old how long you feel like you've been trusted in the Lord yeah, it's 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 uh, almost my entire life. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in the church, so mm -hmm. um, it's similar to my wife's uh, nine, ten years old. Yeah. So nine or ten years old, you've been since you've been nine or ten years old, you've been trusting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, how long do you really feel like you've been doing a DOA lifestyle, though, where you've really known what the Lord is saying and you really? made sure you were doing everything you needed to do to be obedient to that though well for me i won't say that it's a time frame because i have been going in and out on a doa um there are times where i'm strong in the lord and then there's time i'm weak in the lord mm -hmm. and I always pray about that because um there's a lot of things in our lives that keep us from being obedient um, and it's not that I don't want to be with the Lord or I know if I be with him, things will change and it will be better. But somehow we get caught up in the world that we're in that it's hard to be obedient every single day. It's hard to be obedient every single day. And that's why we're trying to bring to your consciousness what it means to discern and be obedient so that you might have all that God has for you. Because it is hard to be obedient every single day. But in being obedient every single day, that's when you get what God has for you every single day. And that's when Amen. you begin to have joy every single Amen. day. And that's when you begin to have fulfillment every, every single, single day. day. And yes, the devil goes to work. Every, every single, single day, day. but right. every single day you begin to beat the devil. Yes. You begin to overcome the devil yes. and the devil tucks his tail and goes yes. home as a loser 
every yes, single day. And I believe we owe it to the devil to send them home as a loser every single day. Day because yes. he's been messing with our family, yes. he's been messing with our ancestors, yes. he's been messing with us for yes. all of our life, robbing us of our blessings yes. every single day. Mm -hmm. And so, how do we then get that? We have to learn how to discern what God is saying and be obedient uh, so that we can get what God has for us. And so, because the devil is cunning and because the devil is tricky. Uh, then what God says to us every day might be different mm -hmm. because he then knows what it is that we need to overcome. So he's mm -hmm. trying to get us to be obedient in a certain kind of way. All right, good. Uh, and so, Brother Ralph, listen, uh, oftentimes we are trying to learn how to discern the voice of the Lord. And this week we've kind of come back around to the D because we can always talk about the O, but there is no O so you get the D. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't most of the time we say we're being obedient because we just think we're doing something good. good. Right. Yeah. I'm doing a good thing. I'm doing I'm doing something that is respectable. I'm doing something that is good for the community. I'm doing something that's good for my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I'm being nice. I'm treating people nice. So I'm being obedient. That's not always the case. It's good to be nice. You are supposed to treat your neighbor right. You are supposed yeah. to do all of that. So in a way we can suggest that's being obedient for sure. But God also has a word of instruction for our lives, a word that we're supposed to be living by personally, not a general word. We're all supposed to love our neighbor. We're all yeah. supposed to be doing that. But how we do it, how we go about doing it is supposed to be something specific for you. And so when you think about discerning the voice of the Lord, we talked about this a little bit at noon this week. Um, there are many ways in which God speaks right? But it's never really a voice that you necessarily hear, right? It's something that you feel. It's something that you experience. Yeah. Uh, and so while we have you at the table, can you tell us how it is that you really experience the voice of the Lord, the instruction of the Lord, the word of the Lord? Uh, from my experience, um, when certain situations arise, um, the Lord speaks to me and tells me oh, I'm in a position where he put, places me to be of aid to someone else, um, such as when I'm at work. Uh, I walk around daily in the mornings when I get there, and I check on almost every employee that's there. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, supervision. It's just to see how they're doing and gauge their response to a good morning. Because I've found that in doing that, I've found some employees who may be going through something. And when I gauge the response, it is not the usual one that I usually get. Then I can stop and take time to say, hey, what's going on? You're not your usual self. And I've found by doing that, I've found they have underlying issues. And some issues I can speak to. And then the Lord gives me the wisdom to say what I need to say to them to help the situation uh, become better. Right. So if I'm hearing you right, then the Lord speaks to you uh, as you feel something, you see something. Then the Lord pulls on your heartstrings or the Lord indeed identifies and shows you something. Uh, and so that's not necessarily the Lord telling you to do something in the sense that Oftentimes we're waiting on the Lord to say, do this, but the Lord will show you something sometimes. And that's the voice of the Lord. And I really am trying to get us to understand that discerning what God is saying is not always uh, hearing an instruction. Do this for her. But as you are indeed engaging her, right, you then see something about her and then God puts it on your heart to do something uh, because it's bothering you that she doesn't have it's bothering you that she is not it's bothering you that she is certain kind of way and God puts it on your heart uh, to do something because when I say put it on your heart it bothers you uh, and, and so now it is uh, that maybe it is God is asking you to do something uh, and, and sometimes discerning the voice of the Lord is not always that concrete and dry in the sense that God says do 
but we have to learn the voice of God. And as we learn the voice of God, meaning how God communicates with us, uh, and then the more we're obedient to that. So if God puts something on your heart and then you react, then you'll see how God responds yeah. and how God does. And so that's part of the work that we have to do to discern. We have to try to respond to everything that we think is God in our life. Uh, when we feel something and we feel like it's God, you got to respond. Uh, when we Amen. hear something and we feel like it's God, you got to respond. When Amen. you see something and you think it's God, you have to move and you have to respond. Amen. Now, Ms. Johnny, you said uh, that life just doesn't make it easy to be obedient. What is the hardest thing in life that you've experienced that makes it hard to be obedient? thing is making time all right making time to um i'll say read the word um understand the word um and carry out the word um lots of times a lot of things let's say a lot of things but some things will come into our lives where um we're focused on god but then at the moment something else over here comes and it distracts you so when that distraction comes in, it take away from what you're doing with God and where, where he had led you to be, and you leave that spot, and you go somewhere else. So that's not being obedient to the Lord. So um, it's, 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 you know, for me, that's the hardest thing, and that's things that I'm working on because I know there's a need over here, and I know that the Lord called me to do something too. But sometimes, well, I'm going to say, you know, but I'll say all the time, whatever he called me to do, um, I'll go over here. But then when I find myself being over here, he really called me over here to do this thing too. So I'm, I find myself going back and forth, back and forth. And I pray about that because I ask the Lord, where do you want me to be? You know, where, what else do you want me to do? And I don't want those things that's over here to keep me focused on what he want me to do. But then that's why I'm confused because I'm like, well, he called me over here to do this. And I know he put me here for a reason. And I go ahead and I stay there and I'll answer and I'll do what he called me to do over there. But then at the same time, I'm like, dang, I missed out over here, you know. But in, in actuality, I did not miss out because that blessing that he gave me to give to someone else is done. And that's that, that 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 that's very good. I like the way she suggested that because oftentimes there's much good we can do. And and again, I need you all to understand being obedient uh, to what the Lord is saying can become tricky sometimes because if I'm doing something good, does that mean I'm being disobedient? Nobody wants to say it that way. Nobody wants to look at it that way. But if God has something over here for you to do, and then there's something good you can do over here, uh, which one should you be doing? Uh, and oftentimes, I can be doing good over here. I can feel good about myself. I can feel like I'm helping somebody. I can feel like somebody's being better because of this and feel fulfilled uh, because I am helping people and I feel valued and people are doing this and it's good. But then over here, I really feel like this is what God is telling me, but it's trouble, it's strife, it's struggle. And I don't always feel like I want to do it, uh, but God keeps on bringing me back to this thing. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm beginning to wonder if this is really God asking me to do this mm -hmm. because I don't really get joy out of this. I don't really yeah. get uh, like I do over here doing this thing over here, uh, but I really do feel like God is pulling me over here. So what is it? And this is what I want to suggest to everybody. Uh, this is the sacrifice that's necessary to be obedient. Yes. Mm -hmm. In order to be obedient, you cannot be obedient without sacrifice. sacrifice. And sometimes the sacrifice is the feeling valued and feeling good about it. Because oftentimes we have to push through that to do the real work, the greater work. Right. And the greater work is not about us. It's about getting God the glory. Uh, right. And, and so oftentimes we want to be where we feel valued. We want to be where we feel good. And, and that is indeed uh, a fleshly thing. Um, 
And it's nothing that we ought to not, because everybody wants to feel valued. Everybody yes. wants to feel good. Everybody wants to feel like I have purpose. And everybody wants to be a, a rewarded and uh, feel accomplished. But I believe God will do that for you, too. And, and, and when God does it, God is going to do it in a way that supersedes anything that is going to happen in these worldly realms yeah. coming from you or coming from you. Uh, and so I think what you are suggesting is there's a special reward that comes when you actually complete what it is that God is saying do. Yeah. Right. So oftentimes we get started, as you said, on what God says do. Then we see something good we can do over here. And we leave what God says do to go do this something good over here. Uh, and, and then we have to keep on coming back over here. But if you ever complete something, have you ever completed something God told you to do? Absolutely. What's yeah. the last thing you completed that the Lord told you to do? Um, to, to, to speak, um, to expound upon uh, God's glory. And uh, when I get the opportunity to... Uh, say something for the Lord, all right? And um, when I do do that, I feel um, I feel better for myself inside, but I also feel that um, I've listened to the Lord and I've obeyed and completed what he wanted me to do. So that's a special feeling. It's almost like a, 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 a child bringing home a good report card for the parent because that's what they told them to do. So you get that kind of feeling that uh, it, it brings you closer to God because now not only do you have you heard what he wants you to do, you've done it and you, and you feel a sense of uh, accomplishment. The sense of accomplishment in response to what God asked you to do is that euphoria that nobody, nobody, nobody can give you. Uh, and when you accomplish what God says, do there's something so much more that you will receive. And that is the ultimate attachment uh, that I'm praying that we all get to. Uh, because when God begins to pour out his reward and his blessing on you, this thing is more than we could ever imagine. But it's the sacrifice that is required to discern and be obedient that gets us there. Uh, and so today, uh, when you talk about going in and out of, you know, relationship with the Lord and being obedient and discerning what God is suggesting, when you are most consistent in doing it, what are you constantly sacrificing in that space? When I'm consistent in doing what the Lord asked me, uh, when I'm consistent in doing what the Lord asked me to do, I feel better. Um, I feel, um, like things have been lifted off of me. Um, I feel that I can speak to others more clearly. Um, for instance, just like, um, one day I was in the store up at, um, Family Dollar up the street and I was, you know, in a rush and I was, um, picking up something and this man came to me and he said, he just started talking. He said, ma'am. I don't know, but I'm having problems with this. I'm having problems with that. And in my mind, I'm saying, I'm trying to hurry up, you know. <laughs> and he's speaking of things that um going on in his life and how terrible it's been for him. And how he hasn't been able to um, fulfill anything that the Lord has, you know, be put in front of him. Yeah. And I told him, I say, well, sir, I said, first, you need to get yourself together. And you need to talk to the Lord about your problems. And um, you need to be truthful about what's going on in your life before you can try to figure out what it is. Um, so he was like, ma'am, you said, I know I'm tying up your time and things like that. I said, no, I'm OK. But a few minutes ago, I was in a rush. But when he came to me and he, you know, poured his heart out to me, I made time. And I asked the Lord, you know, to give me the words to speak to him. And I was speaking to him, and at the end, you know, long story short, he said, ma'am, thank you for um, taking the time to listen to me because people don't listen to me at all today. Wow. And so the biggest sacrifice is this, you all. It's the quote-unquote making time thing. Oftentimes, we don't think we have time, or we say, I don't have any time to do any more. 
it's making time, which mm -hmm. means sacrificing something else that we feel like we need to do to spend the time. Uh, and so making time is sacrificing something else to make time, to carve out time. And I pray that as we are on this DOA journey doing this Lenten season, that you learn to make time for what it is that God is putting on your heart, that God is allowing you to feel uh, compassion for, uh, that you indeed make time, which means sacrifice other things to indeed make time to do what it is God says do. Sacrifice other things to indeed do what it is that God is telling you to do so that you can indeed receive all that God has for you. And I'm telling you, uh, this Lenten season, if you can ever get to that finish line of accomplishing God's task, uh, then you will see how God floods your life with so many other opportunities. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and he'll give you all yes. of these things and I'm praying yes. for you today that you'll seek ye first what it is God is saying which means make that a priority and then it'll make all other things flow the way that it is and so as we look to get into the flow seek first what it is God is saying yes. and then he'll bless you with everything else but it starts with living this DOA lifestyle when you have issues when you have problems when you have challenges yes you face your challenges by what getting a word seeking what it is that God is saying then being obedient to that and accomplishing what God says not what you think you have to do and God will flood your life with grace flood your life with mercy flood your life with peace and he will flow over all things and cover you in such a way that you come out better than you ever could imagine and so we're grateful for the Williams who have joined us today at the shepherd's table now let's go on over to the preaching lab so we can hear what God says y'all make sure you take your shepherd's table mugs with you today go on Miss Johnny get your shepherd's table mug today uh, and, and indeed you all have a great week we'll see you very soon remember there's a seat waiting on you at the table a seat at the shepherd's table I say wait let me grab you a chair when we walk by faith from God's word that we hear loud and clear Coming to the Shepherd's Table is a great experience. Um, it will open up your heart. Um, it'll get you closer to the Lord. And it puts you on a spot to say where I'm going or what I would like to do. There's no special words or feelings that you have to come and sit here and tell anyone. It's coming from the heart and what you have learned and where you want to be. And it's a great experience to come here and just let it flow. And you get your cup. Hallelujah. We are now in the preaching lab and we're grateful for uh, this 930 virtual hour. I pray that you share that you like uh, and I pray that you indeed come get you a seat at the shepherd's table uh, and that you grow into a practicing Christian. What is that one in which allows God to flow through your life, to work through your life, wherever you are, whatever situation you are in. And so as we look for a word in the preaching lab today at this 930 virtual hour, uh, I need you to meet me uh, in Genesis chapter three, Genesis chapter three, beginning at the sixth verse. I just want to read verse six and verse seven, Genesis chapter three, verse six and seven. Come on, let's pray for this word. Uh, uh, would you mind raising your hand wherever you are and just saying, Lord, I need a word. And oftentimes we don't know we need a word or oftentimes we are just trying to make it through life and we are just trying to survive the issues and the problems that we're going through. Uh, but the Lord says he wants you to be more than a conqueror. The Lord says he wants you to be a blessing and he wants you to be an example to the power that can flow through your life and so Lord speak to us now uh, that we can be uh, the lighthouse uh, that shows everybody the goodness of the Lord that shows everybody what can actually happen let us be the conduits in which you can work through to do miracles signs and wonders to blow people's minds to help them to be in relationship with you and so we come now seeking a word from you that we can be all that you need us to be in Jesus name. 
Amen. And so as we come now looking for this word in Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says this. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And as we get into this uh, Lenten season and as I was listening to Miss Johnny at the table, one of the things that I feel like God has recognized about his own creation is that we're easily distracted. God knows that about us. Uh, and, and I think God knows that because as God created the heavens and the earth, uh, remember what he said on the first day he looked around and said, it's good. On the second day he looked around and said, it's good. On the third day, he looked around and said, it's good. On the fourth day, he looked around at his creation and said, it's good. On the fourth day, he looked around at his creation and he said, it's good. On the fifth day, he looked around and he said, it's good. And then on the sixth day, he looked around and said again, it's good. God knows that he made some stuff uh, that is good and it's hard to look around and not be distracted by everything that's going on around you. Uh, but the truth of the matter is most of the time we're not distracted by the good things. We're distracted by the bad things. We're distracted by the things that we should not be thinking about. And so as we begin to look at this text, I want you to understand this morning that God wants you to know more about him and his word than about you and your lack. If you were to be honest, the most distracting thing in your life is the things that you think are working on you or working against you. When you find something that you think is working against you, when you find something that you think is causing lack, you begin to worry. When you find something when the doctor tells you there's something working in your body that could possibly kill you, that's the only thing you think about. Oh, when indeed you find out that you don't have money to get what you want, that's the only thing you think about. When indeed there's a problem, that's the only thing you think about. Uh, but what God wants you to know is that I'm doing so much more uh, than what the problem is in your life. Uh, and as I begin to look at this text, uh, I need you all to see something real clear and real quick because the more you know about God and his word the better places you can stay in and the more you know about your lack and the more you know about you the further distracted you get check this out uh, what I have realized as I look at this text one more time uh, is that living in paradise uh, could very well be the place in which God protects you from yourself Let's look at this one more time. We find that God drops Adam and Eve off in paradise. And he tells them that you can do whatever you want to do. You can enjoy whatever you want to enjoy. You just cannot eat from that one tree. And what we find out is that there were things in which they could do that they couldn't do anywhere else in this space. There are things that they could enjoy that they couldn't do anywhere else but in this space. But what we find out is that they desired something that they had no business desiring, which means that when we desire something we have no business desiring, that's when we're about to be disobedient. And what that means is they wanted to do something other than what the word told them to do. I need you to understand when you are disobedient, that means you're trying to do something other than what God told you to do. That doesn't mean it absolutely has to be the worst thing in the world. No, it's just not what the Lord told you to do. Being disobedient is doing what God did not tell you to do. <coughs> and excuse me, so you can be doing something good, but God didn't tell you to do it. 
doing something good can be just as disobedient as doing something that you know you're not supposed to be doing. But here it is when you look at this, uh, I need you to understand that God is trying to protect us from our Sales. I need you to consider this morning that paradise could very well be the place in which God puts us to protect us from ourselves. And so as we look at this text, what God did was he put them in a space and he provided parameters and a word to protect them from themselves. Could it be today that God has put you in a space, giving you instructions calling and purpose on your life to protect you from yourself so you can enjoy things that you never can enjoy otherwise. Think about your life and think about what you've been through. Think about what you've gone through. Has it been because of the mistakes that you made or has it been because of your obedience that you're enjoying and going and seeing and experiencing the things that you're experiencing? Much of our life is the sum total of our mistakes more so than it is our obedience and that's why we see and experience what we experience and so God is suggesting to us today that oftentimes my work uh, is not necessary to, to, to give you what you want but to protect you from yourself I need you to see this because in the text when you don't obey God's instruction you see distractions that you weren't supposed to see look at it the Bible says that when they did what they were not supposed to do, their eyes were opened. To what? Their eyes were opened to things about themselves that they never witnessed or saw before. When God is trying to bless you, he's protecting you from seeing things about yourself that you're not supposed to see. Think about it. It says their eyes are open and then immediately they realized they were naked. When you begin to see things about yourself that make you insecure about yourself, then you start doing things for yourself as opposed to God. And so God sometimes tries to protect you from yourself so you don't spend time trying to do something for yourself, but you keep working for him. But because we're disobedient, we end up trying to cover up ourselves as opposed to working for him. When we're disobedient, then we get stuff in the closet. And when we get stuff in the closet, then we start trying to protect our closet. And then we start wasting time trying to protect our closet as opposed to getting him the glory. So here it is. Now, when God shows up, uh, they are making clothes for themselves and they're hiding from God. Everybody say waste of time trying to cover themselves and hide from God. A waste of time. God will cover you and there's no reason to hide from God because God can find you wherever you are. But if you're spending your time trying to cover yourself and hide from somebody that you can never hide from, what are you doing? So here it is. What we find out is that God's word oftentimes is meant to protect you from your self. Because now they're spending time making clothes when they didn't even need clothes before their eyes were opened. Disobedience leads to you being distracted from what it is you're really supposed to be doing. Which is why doing good things, even if God didn't tell you to do it, is going to distract you from the things that you're really supposed to be doing. And now you're wasting your time doing stuff that you have no business doing. And now you're not going to be fulfilled the way that you really want to be fulfilled. And you're not going to have joy the way you really want to have joy and you're not going to experience what God really wants you to experience and so God is saying for right now can everybody stop what you're doing and allow me to protect you from yourself I created you you are fearfully and wonderfully made I created you from the dust I blew breath into your body I know what it is that you want I know what it is that you like I know what it is that you desire I know what it is that's going to make you smile I know know what it is that's going to give you peace. I know what it is to do. I know how to get you over. I know how to bring you out. I know how to heal you. I know how to fix you. I know how to put you back together again. And so I need you to allow me to protect
protect you from yourself uh, because when I'm able to protect you from yourself, uh, I can keep you in perfect peace. Uh, when I can protect you from yourself, uh, I can make sure your enemy can't destroy you. Uh, when I can protect you from yourself, uh, I can make a way for you to have uh, what you can never have before. Uh, but this is where I need everybody to get your mind made up that this Lenten season, uh, I'm going to do what God says do because it's protected me from myself. When God tells me to go, it's not because it's punishment. It's protecting me from myself. When God tells me to be still, it's not because he doesn't want me to do anything. It's because he's protecting me from myself. When God tells me not to say anything, it's not because he doesn't want me to talk. It's not because what I have to say is not valuable. It's because he's protecting me from my Self, uh, and I need you to understand uh, God knows that uh, you need protection from yourself. And I need you to begin to look at the Word of God as protection from your self. So today, whenever the Lord begins to speak to you, Whenever the Lord gives you instruction, whenever the Lord shows you something, whenever the Lord begins to communicate in whatever form he communicates with you, please know that God communicates to protect you from your self. Because the only thing that can mess up what God really wants to do for you is you. So God is not working on your enemy. God is working on you. God is not working on your surroundings. God is working on you because the truth of the matter is every time we look through the Bible, despite the surroundings, if God can work on you, he can do anything. Look at it. If we go through the Bible, God is working on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As long as they stay focused on the word, the atmosphere doesn't affect them. They're in the burning, fiery furnace, and it does not affect them. Uh, but if indeed he did not protect them from themselves, they would have burned up in the fire. Uh, when you think about Daniel in the lion's den, uh, he had Daniel's mind. Uh, Daniel kept his mind, stayed on the Lord. Uh, Daniel trusted the Lord. So Daniel was able to be protected from that which was supposed to take him out. You don't need protection from your surroundings. You don't need protection from your enemy. You need protection from yourself. It was Jesus who was going to the cross. Did he need protection from those who yelled out crucify him? No. Did he need protection from those who nailed him to the cross? No. Did he need protection from those who lied on him? No. Did he need protection from the very folk that didn't want him to do what he was supposed to do? No. What he needed protection from was from his own self. That's why he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, Lord, can you take this cup away from me? And the Lord said, I don't know about that. And so he said, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus taught us that you need protection from yourself. If you can protect yourself from yourself, then you can see God do anything in your situation which is why when God speaks to you you got to get out of your feelings so you can protect yourself from yourself which is why when God begins to do stuff in your life you got to stop checking with everybody else and stay focused on his word because it's going to protect you from yourself I need some folk right about now to understand there's nothing wrong with you you are fearfully and wonderfully made you shall be the head and not the tail God has all some things in store for you. Uh, you have an awesome purpose. Uh, God knows the plans he has for your future, <laughs> but you have to learn that you are the one that gets in the way. So what God tells you is to protect you from yourself. Would you let God protect you from yourself by being obedient? That's what the DOA lifestyle is. It's allowing yourself to be protected from yourself. You are your worst enemy. Would you allow God to protect you from yourself by living a DOA lifestyle? May the Lord bless you real good today. And as we come to this point,
The first thing God says to you is, can I protect you from yourself? Will you give me your life? Which means give it away. Stop trying to be in control. Let me be in control. That's the first thing. Isn't that crazy? Think about this, y'all. Salvation is God saying to you, I need to be in control of your life, not you. He's trying to protect you from yourself. So if you give me your life, I will prepare a place for you in paradise, he says. Isn't that amazing? And I pray that you'll give God the opportunity to be in charge of your life and protect you from yourself. Think about it, you all. When you give God your life, then you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then says, go when you want to sit. If you sit and don't go, something bad is going to happen. Holy Spirit says, go. You don't go, you experience the bad. Protecting you from yourself is all God wants to do so you can see all he has for you. But you have to learn to listen to God and move accordingly. So now. I pray that you're willing to move accordingly. And part of moving accordingly is surrounding yourself with people who are trying to trust God. So we're talking about the same things. We're experiencing the same things. And we're trying to grow in the same way. That's why you want to be part of a church. And that's why you should uh, want a pastor. But more so than wanting a pastor, you need a pastor. Somebody to walk with you and talk with you and help you to get to the places you never knew God wants to take you. My name is Christopher Paul Burnett. And I would love to be your pastor, to walk with you and to talk with you, help you to discern what God is saying so you can be obedient and get all that God has for you. So today, as we go through this uh, challenge called life, you will win if you allow God to protect you from yourself. You will win. There's nothing that anybody can do to you if you allow God to protect you from yourself. That's what Jesus teaches us as we near the cross. There's nothing that anybody can do to you if you allow God to protect you from yourself. The first mistake we make is when we get in our feelings and we start doing something to protect ourselves when we can't protect ourselves, only God can. So he protects us from ourselves. And so today I'm praying that you would continue this year and especially during this Lenten season to make the necessary sacrifices to allow God to protect you from yourself, which means you got to give up certain things to deny yourself so that God can have supreme being. And one of those things is learning how to give. And so we've asked everybody to join the Give 2023 campaign this year. What does that mean? We want everybody to be obedient unto the Lord in their giving, which means that God starts by asking us to give the tithe. Now, the tithe is 10% of everything that you get, everything that he gives you, everything that he avails to you, income tax, it is your salary, it is your lunch money, it is, oh, here goes a gift for your birthday. It's everything that God gives to you. Uh, it's your time, it's your energy, it's your mind, it's your skill, it's your gifting, it's 10% of all of that that God gives to you. But it is not necessarily just about the amount as much as it is about the priority. And what we find out is that most of the time people who are trying to tithe say they can't tithe because at the end of the day they don't have it. But if you give it unto God when you get it, you always have it. Somebody's going to get that in a second. If when God gives it, you give it, you have it. But if you try to do your thing first, then come back around and try to do his thing, you don't have it. And it's really true. Uh, you understand you're supposed to be given $200, but at the end of the day, you only got $50. Why? Because you did everything else first. But when you learn to give God first, everything else works out. That's what tithers begin to figure out. That's what we begin to see when we really give unto God first Everything else stretches. Everything else works. Everything else comes around and makes it 
abundantly well in your life. And so I'm praying today that you'll join the Give 2023 campaign. Why 2023? Well, we're in the year 2023, first of all. And second of all, that's still short of the poverty line in the state of Maryland, which is why I'm believing that everybody can give at least 2023, but you should be striving to be a tither. And so what does that look like? That's about $40 a week if you're going to give at the 2023 level, but I believe the Lord has blessed you in a better way than that. And so I pray that you give faithfully unto the Lord. Do what it is the Lord is saying. You see how to give before you right now. We're about to go into our Sunday evolution, which is kind of like our Sunday school time here at 11 o'clock, and then we're going into worship at 12.15. We welcome you to join us uh, during those times on Sunday. You can give at that point in time, or you can give online any time of the day or night, any day of the week online at ssame.org, or you can text to give at 844-334-1180. However you choose to give, I pray that you give faithfully unto the Lord, which means you do what the Lord tells you to do, how the Lord tells you to do, and you do it first. Give the Lord your best. Make him your priority, and he'll show you what it is he can really do through you. May the Lord bless you real good. We pray that you'll also join us during this Lenten season on the Daily Pursuit. We get up every morning at 7 a.m., we stop at 12 noon, and we conclude every day at 8 p.m. in prayer. This Wednesday, we'll start virtually with our stations to the cross, the scriptural way to the cross. We want you to join us, and we want you to ask everybody that you know to come walk these stations and scriptural way to the cross. 14 stops to help us to figure out the necessary sacrifices to get all that God wants us to have. And our ministerial staff, along with myself, will be helping us at each one of these stops. And so we're prayerful for you that you might make this a meaningful experience this Lent by coming and being with us virtually every Wednesday starting at 630 so that we might make our way to the cross. Uh, and so we look forward to you joining us in that every Wednesday. But every day you can join the Daily Pursuit. Now, let's receive the benediction now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all we know to ask for or can imagine. To him be glory in the church. And all the people that agreed opened up their mouth and shouted, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Pray.